So sustainable procurement is a very critical area. And this is an area that has a lot of focus nowadays. And companies nowadays want, or they are trying their best to ensure that they act sustainably. And sustainably here we are saying, we are supposed to produce products or services that consider the environment. You do not damage the environment in any, any way. And most companies nowadays are focusing more on what we call circular economy. So they are producing items that can be reused, items that can be recycled. And they are trying as much as possible not to reduce, to reduce waste when they are doing their production. So sustainable public procurement refers to the process of fusing the environment, social and economic variable in a way of achieving value for money to fit the overall procurement life cycle. So what you are producing in the, in the environment or what you're producing as a farm should be products that are going to consider the environmental impact. These products will also ensure the social impact. And also we are talking about the economical impact. And when you're talking about environmental impact, we are talking about the planet at large. And the planet is where we live as individuals or corporate uh, societies. So we are not supposed to destroy the planet that we are living in. And that is why we are encouraged to use what is called renewable energy, energy that you can renew. For example, solar energy and other forms of energy, hydroelectrical energy. Then the issue of social impact, we are trying our level best to interact with the people within a certain spectrum of society. And social impact, what you produce must impact the society in a positive way. So you're not supposed to produce products that are going to harm the people who are using that product. Then the issue of economic, we are talking about profits. As much as you want to produce, remember you are in business. And if you are in business, your main focus is to get profits. So sustainability will help you as a business to be economical in that in the long run, you are able to get profits. Then we are talking about, just a minute. So what are some of the aims of sustainable procurement? When we are talking about aims, we are talking about what sustainable procurement is supposed to achieve both in the short run and in the long run. So the first one is to minimize negative impacts of goods, works, or services across their life cycle and through the supply chain. So we are trying our level best to ensure we minimize negative impact to the environment, negative impact to the people, and negative impact to the business productivity in terms of profits. Number two is to minimize the demand for non-renewable energy. Non-renewable energy is like uh, diesel. When you use diesel, once you use it, you cannot reuse it again. It is referred to as non-renewable. But when you are using solar energy, every time you can re-engineer or reuse the, the solar energy again and again, or water or any other source of renewable uh, energy. Then number three is to ensure that fair contract price and terms are applied and respected. So here you will be able to ensure at the end of the day, you respect the, the contract prices, the contract prices. Then the other thing is to promote diversity and equality throughout the supply chain. So we are talking about equality, equality in what you do, equality in what you engage in, and equality in how you treat, you treat people within the organization. Then we're also talking about diversity. You're trying your level best as a business to diversify your resources and trying to use your resources in the best way possible. And this will help you as an organization to be able to be competitive at the end of the day. So what are some of the principles of sustainable public procurement? What are the principles of sustainable 
public procurement. The first principle we are saying is application of solid supply chain practices to achieve tenable outcomes. So we are trying our level best to implement sustainable public procurement for purposes of increasing our productivity. And this will help us to achieve our outcome as an organization. Number two is focus on the ultimate impact the material source may have on the environment. So what you procure as an organization must have an impact to the environment. Therefore, organizations are focusing on ensuring that what they bring into the organization has an impact in the lives of their customers, both internal customers and external customers. Then the other thing is adopting sustainable sourcing practice for various goods and services required. So we are trying to adopt some of the best practices when it comes to sourcing, in that we are sourcing on issues that are going to have an impact on society at large, so that your organization will become sustainable in the long term of the existence of that firm. Then the other one is compliance with local and international environmental regulations and standards. So we have various regulations and policies and standards that support sustainability of organizations. And here we are saying, for example, the International Standard Organization 14,000, it talks about the environmental regulations. So organizations are supposed to implement these regulations to the best of their ability so that they do not affect any, any issues within the organization. Therefore, they have to comply with these regulations, failure to which the organizations might end up even closing. And that is why companies like uh, NEMA, for example, normally do some visits in these organizations to check whether they are complying with some of these regulations. Then the other one is um, compliance to human rights and labor laws. Every country, every organization has their labor laws that govern them. And remember, human capital is one of the greatest resources in any organization. Therefore, we need to ensure that we treat our employees to the best of our abilities. Then the other thing is implementation of, of internal, international labor organization. So you need to come up with various policies that support what the international standards are saying in terms of labor. Then we are talking about effective and efficient utilization of available resources in an economic manner. Remember resources are very limited nowadays. And through these organizations are trying their level best to maximize the little resources that they have to ensure that so we are saying that these principles are the ones that guide us when we want to implement some of these issues of sustainability in public procurement so when you go to level two you will have a topic, a whole topic that a whole unit that talks about sustainable procurement. Then the other principle is um, optimum utilization of renewable sources of energy, such as solar, wind, and geothermal, among others. So remember, we have two types of energies. We have renewable energy and non-renewable energy. For example, solar energy, you can renew it by making sure that you have batteries that are rechargeable or trying your level best to store that energy. Then you can also store wind energy and geothermal energy. And geothermal energy maybe comes from uh, natural resources. Geo means, um, uh, uh, geothermal means uh, land. When we have those, um, geographical forces that help in coming up with the energy. So what are some of the, uh, the steps in achieving sustainable procurement? 
one step is supply chain mapping. And when you're talking about supply chain mapping is trying your level best to map your suppliers and trying to communicate with your suppliers and trying to tell them what you are doing in terms of sustainable procurement. And by so doing, you'll help your, your suppliers know what exactly you need in terms of trying to deliver your ultimate goal as an organization. Then number two is a clear channel of communication and expectation. For you to achieve sustainable procurement, you need to clearly communicate what you expect as an organization and what channel are you going to use to ensure that you achieve sustainable procurement. Then uh, use effective tools to measure sustainable performance of suppliers. And some of these tools can be the, the use of questionnaires or interviews where you ask your suppliers what they think will help them achieve what you want to achieve in the organization. And after the suppliers have performed also, you need to go back and check whether the suppliers ex uh, performed the expected performance that you wanted them to achieve. And if they didn't do that, then you need to tell them what they're supposed to do. And if they don't improve, you can always look for alternative source of supply. Then you also need to institute trainings and capacity building. And training is very critical because training enlightens you. It gives you the relevant information that you need. And once you have this information in place, it becomes easier even to implement some of these issues. We are trying to build capacity in terms of the resources that you have. And remember, we are saying resources are limited. So you are using the little resources you have to maximize your potential. Then the other thing is to monitor and review supplier performance. So what do you monitor? You are monitoring what the supplier is, do, is doing. And how can you gauge that this supplier is doing better than the other supplier? Basically, you are looking at the number of complaints that the supplier is having. So you are looking at the, the number of complaints that the supplier is having. If the supplier has a lot of complaints, then you drop that supplier immediately and you look for a new supplier who is going to supply your organization. Then the other thing that you can look at is issues like um, you can do some site visits on the supplier farm and trying to figure out what the supplier is doing. And this normally is done by way of early supplier involvement. So you're involving your suppliers early in the supply chain so that you know what exactly the supplier is doing for purposes of trying to understand the process that the supplier is involved in. And once you understand that the process, it becomes easy even to implement some of these uh, practices or sustainable practices within the organization. Then the other critical step that you need to do in order to achieve sustainable procurement is trying your level best to work with other partners who are in the same industry. And by so doing, it means you will be able to collaborate with some of these suppliers for purposes of performing the best in the industry. So remember when you share information with other partners in the industry, you enlighten yourself and try your level best to find the best ways to achieve all this. So what are the benefits of sustainable procurement? What are the benefits of sustainable procurement? Number one is that sustainable procurement contributes to reduced environmental degradation in terms of pollution and adverse climatic change. Remember currently we have climatic changes. In April, we used to receive rains, but nowadays we don't receive rains in April and other forms of climatic change. So companies need to align themselves with what is happening in the environment. Therefore, sustainable procurement will help to achieve all this by ensuring 
that you understand what happens in an environment and you do not reduce the environment or do not affect the environment in any way. The tenable supply of goods and services into the future. So you are trying to align yourself with what will happen in the future. And sustainability helps you to understand what is happening currently and what is happening currently. What is the impact in the future? So you're trying your level best to ensure that as much as you are using what you're using today, you are not affecting the future generation. Then number three is uphold a good organizational reputation, which becomes a brand image, strengthening the cells within the organization. So you are upholding your reputation. And remember, image is very critical in every organization. An image we are saying will make you or break you. If you have a negative image on the eyes of customers, then it means customers will not come to your organization. And if customers don't come, you will be affecting even the business productivity, both in the short run and in the long run. Then fosters closer collaborative relationship with key stakeholders across the supply chain. So sustainability has enabled organizations to work together towards achieving a certain goal or a common goal. And this goal has helped them to increase their relationship. And every organization nowadays ha is having a win-win situation for their engagement in sustainable procurement. Then we are talking about enhance the acquisition of new business opportunities. So nowadays companies are coming up with new ideas on issues of sustainability. And this has helped most companies to, <clears throat> has helped more companies to come up with new business ideas. And this has helped them to come up with new opportunities for their business, trying to find new markets for their products, trying to um, regenerate some of the products that did not have value, trying to do what is called value addition on those products so that they can fit and they get different customers from different walks of life by maybe segmenting the market to feed some of those customers. Another benefit is facilitate economic utilization of available resources to increase productivity and generate profitability for the bottom line. So when you utilize your resources and you maximize what you have internally, you will be able to increase your productivity. And at the end of the day, once productivity is improved, then it means profitability will be evident in the organization. Then contribute to enhanced innovation of economic friendly goods throughout the supply chain. So we are talking about sustainability as a way of increasing innovation and technology in the organization. <clears throat> so innovation is uh, basically coming up with new ideas for your product, for your services and everything else. So what are the barriers of sustainable public procurement? And when you're talking about barriers, these are the things that hinder most organizations in adopting sustainable public procurement. And these are the things that really are posing a challenge when it comes to sustainability within the organization. So one of the challenges that we are having is high cost. When you hear sustainability, some people have that mentality that they feel when something is sustainable, that thing is very, very costly. And this is affecting most industries and they are reluctant when it comes to issues of trying to implement sustainable procurement, both in the short run and in the long run. Then the other critical barrier of sustainable public procurement is the issue of lack of adequate information on sustainability. Remember, this is a new area that is coming up. And because it is a new area, then it is affecting 
how people So it is, uh, it is affecting most companies. And when you even look at the internet today, you realize that most organizations are not familiar with sustainable public procurement or sustainable procurement. And even when you go to the internet, as much as you are trying to look for information on sustainable procurement, you might have a very difficult time. And that is why even Kissim and Kissim so it was to introduce a whole unit on sustainable supply chain management practices. And this you will do it when you're in level, level two. Then the other barrier that is very common is lack of support by key stakeholders involved on the onset. Who is a stakeholder? Is a, a stakeholder is any organization or individual who is affected by the decisions of the organization, both in a positive way or in a negative. In a positive way or in a negative way. But however, some stakeholders become so reluctant when they want to implement sustainable procurement. Maybe because of the fear of the unknown, what will happen in the event we introduce sustainable procurement? So there is that fear that is within these stakeholders who feel, let's wait and see. Just a minute. Sorry for the interruption. <clears throat> so we are saying, uh, we don't have support to key stakeholders. And stakeholders can be the government of the day, stakeholders can be customers, stakeholders can be the regulators, stakeholders can be the investors who bring money to the organization. Stakeholders can also be the competitors who are watching you and trying to figure out what you're doing in the organization so that they can either copy what you're doing or they can improve on their own processes. Then the other barrier that is very critical is the issue of methodology to undertake sustainable public procurement. Maybe companies have not realized that they need to have a certain methodology of implementing a public, a sustainable public procurement. And here we are also talking about methodologies on monitoring, methodologies on evaluating the performance of the various issues within the organization. Then the other thing that is very critical is lack of corporate social responsibility. Remember, when you talk about corporate social responsibility, here we are saying companies are reluctant to give back to society. And if that is the case, then they also become reluctant to implement sustainable public procurement because they don't want to look at what happens in their community around them. And this might make them to relax a bit when it comes to issues of procurement. Then we are talking about inadequate government legislation and regulations in terms of environmental laws and policies. So most senior managers are reluctant. They don't want to implement legislation that will support sustainable public procurement. And if that is the case, then it means most of these companies are uh, a bit uh, reluctant because they remember you have to comply with the laws. And if you don't comply with the laws, then your organization might close. Or even policies, some of these companies take a long time to implement some of these policies, and that is affecting the implementation of sustainable public procurement. Then the other thing that is very critical is lack of adequate training offered. And when you work today in these institutions, you realize these institutions are not talking about sustainable procurement because it is a practice that is new in the industry. And most professionals have not even implemented a course 
that talks about sustainable procurement. Maybe you can hear of sustainable procurement in a topic, but there's no so well-structured course that talks about sustainable procurement. And also the issue of creating awareness is a problem because of the resources which are limited and companies don't want to spend on sustainable procurement awareness. So what are the pillars of sustainable procurement? We have three pillars that support sustainable procurement. And when you talk about pillars, these are foundations under which sustainable procurement operates. And we have three tenets in which supply chain sustainable procurement operates. And the first one is env environmental sustainability. And here, when we are talking about environmental sustainability, we are talking about the planet at large. Sometimes you might get some books talking about the, th the, three, P the three P's of sustainable procurement. And when you're talking about the three P's, you're talking about the planet, you're talking about the people, and you're talking about um, profitability. And environmental some sustainability uh, can be linked to the planet that we are living in. And what we consume should not be affecting the people around it, the environment around it. So envir environmental sustainability basically looks at the environment at large. Then the other one is social sustainability. Remember social sustainability talks about the people or the employees who are working for a particular organization. So social sustainability takes a keen interest on the people, the health of the people who are working for those organizations. So you need to create an environment that helps the people to grow health-wise so that tomorrow they will come again and again to work for your organization. Then the last one is economic sustainability. And economic sustainability, we are talking about the profits. As much as you want to produce as an organization, as much as you want to look at the environment, you also need to look at the profits that you are going to get. The organization must be sustainable in the overseeable future because most organizations are going going concerned. Most organizations are, are going concerned. So that, that is the end of that topic. That is the end of topic one.